Hello, today I'm going to show you how to fit this workbench into the 112 scale garden shed which you'll find um, on my YouTube channel and that's a four part tutorial and this workbench is really easy to make and I've just used two um, types of wood the Abesh um, is the make of wood and that's spelt O-B-E-C-H-E and I've used a 1.5 millimetre thick sheet, that's 1 16th of an inch, and I've used a 3 by 3 millimetre strip in the same make of wood, and that's 1 8th of an inch. And then I've just used a spare piece of um, 5 by 5 strip, but you can use any thickness, just to help um, with pressing the pieces together when I've applied the glue. But we'll get to that as we go along. To cut the strip wood, I used um, a mitre block and saw. And for the sheet wood, I used my Swan Morton knife, which takes a size 10A blade. Always put a new blade in at the start of a project, or if it begins to catch or drag along the wood, which means it's becoming blunt. You'll need a steel rule, which we use for cutting the wood, and obviously for measuring. Nice sharp pencil for accurate marking. And then I've used um, a walnut varnish to finish the piece. And that's just a normal household interior satin varnish. I've used Gorilla Wood glue, any sort of strong um, glue that bonds quickly, or PVA. And I apply glue with a cocktail stick. I also use those to remove excess glue. And you'll also need some um, Q-tips or cotton buds. They come in handy as well for removing glue once the piece is actually in place. So, uh, yes, and some sandpaper. And as you know by now, I cut mine into these small pieces to make them easy to handle. And you'll just need a sort of 180, a sort of medium grade sandpaper. And that's just used for distressing the piece at the end because I don't do any sort of sanding as we go along. I think that's everything you'll need. The cutting list is coming up next, and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to begin by gluing two short supports between each pair of legs. And the legs are the slightly longer, don't get them confused with the long support, which is slightly shorter, so leave those to one side. So I've dispensed some glue here onto a piece of card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. So just apply a tiny dot to each end of each short support. Like that. And then glue one to the top of the first leg and one to the bottom and then bring in the remaining leg. So we're just creating a frame here. Press those together so you can feel the glue begin to take. And then don't try and pick that up as it'll just fall apart, but just carefully slide it along the worktop. And then you can get on with the next one. So do that with each pair of legs, so you'll have four of these frames once you're done. And next we're going to glue a long support along each edge of each bench top. So apply glue along the long edges. And on the other side. and then just press a long support up against each side. Press it firmly into place. Squeeze those together. Again, push that along the worktop. So do all three bench tops in the same way. 
I'm purposely not removing the excess glue so this is going to be hidden underneath the bench the top part will have an extra top covering it so there's no need to spend time doing that okay so take one of the supported top pieces and apply glue along one short edge bring in one of the leg sections and just press that up against the top piece and the front and back will be flush then press it into place and then you should just let the glue dry off for a moment I'm just going to hold that into place whilst it starts to set once that's dry enough to handle lay the piece down bring in another of the long supports just apply glue to one end and then just attach that right along the bottom of that leg press those together you want a nice flat edge along here this will actually be standing on the floor. And again, just let that dry off for a moment because then we want to tip it back onto its side. And then again, when that's dry enough to handle, tilt it onto the side like that and then apply glue along that short edge. And a little dot of glue on the end of the long support there and then we're going to bring in another set of legs you want the long support at the bottom there to be flush with the bottom of that back leg and then you can sort of turn it like that and press it all flat and press that up against there just making sure that long support at the back there stays where it should nice flush edge along there and you can bring in a piece of your spare um, 5x5 strip here just to press those edges together make sure you've got a nice sort of tight join just let that dry off for a moment okay so bring in your next supported top piece I glue along the short edge again and then that goes next you can see what we're doing here we're just building this up a top piece and then a set of legs and there'll be another top piece and the final set of legs and just thinking about it, that on its own would make a nice little workbench or just the two pieces. So if you didn't want to go all the way along that um, back wall underneath the window, you can just sort of stop after this set of legs. It's entirely up to you. You might just want something in the middle and then you can maybe stand things at either end. But I want mine to go almost all the way along. There'll be about five millimetres left at the end. I just want to sort of stack some bits of wood or something along there. Remember I'm making mine into a really sort of messy, messy old garden shed stroke workshop. I think it's always more interesting doing messy scenes, all nice and sort of neat and prim. Okay, that's sort of dried off now, so again, turn that piece like that and take another long support. And again, gluing that along the bottom. Just holding that top piece down, that's tipping up there. I think after a while cutting mats begin to bubble a bit. This one's certainly getting old now, so they sort of stick up a bit in the middle. If 
However, I'm trying to make sure something's straight. I all sort of use the flat area on my desk rather than on the cutting mat. Okay, so I'll just leave that to dry off for a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to stand that up very carefully. And again, just apply glue along these edges. set of legs. Get it into position along that top first. And then just pop that support into that bottom corner. I'm just very gently pressing it all together because it's quite fragile at the moment. I'm just going to lay that down like that and bring in my spare piece of 5x5 five five strip. Just press all that together, making sure this is still a nice flat edge along here. Okay, so I'm going to apply glue to my final top piece. Press that into place along there. Let's see if I can just turn that over without it all falling apart. And put that final long support into place. On that bottom edge. Like that. Just holding it together while the glue begins to dry. Okay, because it's quite long now, I'm not going to stand it up. I'm just going to pick it up like that and apply the final lot of glue. A little bit of glue on the support there. And then I'll just bring that final leg piece in like that. And this is what squares everything up. Just make sure the top is all flush. I'm actually going to try and turn that. I'm going to use my strip to pull that all together. Just very gently pushing that into a better position. Just slightly overhanging at the front. So just keep checking, keep making sure everything's square. And where it should be and you've got time to do that before the glue has completely dried. I'm happy that that's nice and flush there. If you find afterwards that something's gone a bit wrong and you haven't got a complete sort of straight line along the bottom you can just sand certain areas away a little bit. But again if you're doing a rustic shed it probably doesn't matter if you've got a bit of a wonky workbench. <laughs> just adds to the realism. Okay, so I'm going to sort of push that along now and leave that to dry. And then we'll have a look at it inside the shed. Okay, so there's the workbench in place. And like I say, there's about five millimetres or, or maybe quarter of an inch um, at this end. And I'll be putting some planks of wood in there, some strip wood. Um, but you need that. You can't go all the way along because you've got this lip here. Um, behind the door or at the edge of the door you wouldn't be able to get that in unless you have that bit of movement there so unless you sort of build this in as you're building the shed um, maybe before you've put the mouldings in and the roof on so you can sort of slide it straight down you won't be able to have it so that it's all the way along like that so you are going to have to have a bit of a gap but like I say you might just want to do one section or two sections and have it in the centre there and then you've got space to stand things at either end so it's entirely up to you but you will need a little bit of room um, just to get that into position okay so I'm going to take that out of there now really carefully and it's still tight as you can see even with that little gap at the end so do be careful as you're sort of manoeuvring it 
and I'll just pop the shed to one side and now we can fit the workbench top. Okay, so apply glue then to the table top. And then put the top piece into place. And the edges of it should just be flush with the edges of the sort of frame structure. Press that down. And then I'm going to clamp this into place all the way around. You could probably use pegs with this if you haven't got enough um, clamps. And just go all the way around so Use as many as you can, supporting it in all areas. Be careful with these ones because you haven't put them on sort of exactly in the centre of that strip underneath. They can ping off. You need to do this because, as you know by now, wood does try to lift. Um, when it's when the glue is drying and you'll always have that gap there so you will need to clamp it all down I've got one more clamp somewhere yeah nice blue one put that there so I'll leave that to dry and then we'll be ready to varnish Okay, so the top has now dried into place and I left that drying overnight. There's no need to leave it that long, but it was just my last job of the day, so that's a nice solid piece now. And normally I would sand um, a piece of furniture, give it a really good sand before applying the varnish, but with this I'm not going to because I want it to look quite sort of rough. But what I am going to do, and this is just optional, I want to create some cup rings or mug rings on the worktop here. Um, just to add to that sort of um, messy uh, workshop look. And as um, varnish doesn't take over glue, I've got some glue here on a piece of card and I've got this um, piece of plastic tube and this sort of came around the top of a paintbrush and I always keep them. I never throw anything away if I think it might come in handy. But you could also use a drinking straw but bear in mind the bottom of a mug is about three inches, um, so don't use anything that's sort of wider than six millimetres or quarter of an inch, because it'll be too big. And then you just want to dip the end of the tube just lightly in the glue, like that, and then just press it onto the worktop where you think a, a cup might have been standing. A little bit more there. Like that. I'll put another one over here. And don't use a pattern either. Um, just sort of do them quite randomly. I think my miniature person would probably do a lot of his work in the middle of the table, so I'm putting them here in the middle. Maybe I'll have one at that end as well. He might have been over there doing something with this cup of tea. And some of these have gone just into a circle, but that's okay. I need to stop now because I feel like I'm doing too many, but it's such good fun. <laughs> I'll put another one over there and that'll be it. Okay, so just sort of random little um, circle marks there. And this, and this looks so much better once I've put the varnish on, and you'll see what I mean then. Okay, so I'll leave that to dry, and then I'll do the first coat of varnish. Okay, so that's the first coat of varnish um, on the table. That's still a little bit tacky at the moment, but I just wanted to show you the um, 
little cup rings there. I don't know if you can actually catch those on camera, but they're very subtle. But it does just add a nice little finishing touch. Maybe if I tilt it a bit, you can see. Yeah. Like that. And then while you've got the varnish out, just do one coat of varnish as well on these uh, pieces. That's the back support and the side support. And then we'll glue those into place once the bench is actually in situ. Okay, the varnish is now completely dry and I'm actually going to glue um, the workbench into place inside the shed. So begin by applying glue along the bottom edge. And you'll need to work quite quickly because we've got to apply it to the bottom edge, the back, and then along that side as well that's going to be touching the wall. Okay, that's everywhere. I'm going to manoeuvre that in without getting glue anywhere else. And then just press that into place and try and get your hands in there and sort of press it against the back wall at the same time. And I'm pressing it down as well. So everything that's glued and touching, just give it a good press. Just hold that into place and get in there and remove the glue that I've smudged there. I need to get in there with a cotton bud, I think. Let's see what I've got here. Cotton buds or Q-tips are always handy to have on your work work table. Okay, so I should just sort of hold that in place for a little bit longer until the glue begins to take. And then we'll attach that back and side support. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, you can attach the back support. So just apply glue along the back there. And apply it as well along one of the sort of narrow edges and that will stick to the table top. So put that into place, pushing it right against that back wall and down as well against the top of the bench. And this is where that um, spare piece of 5x5 five five strip comes in handy again and you can just use that press that into place then. I've got my other hand on the outside wall so just press those together and again use a cocktail stick or a q-tip to remove that excess glue. And then you can do the same thing again with that side support. A bit there. Oh, one of the narrow edges. to push that into place. So this just finishes it off, just makes it look like the workbench is actually built in rather than just sort of freestanding. And if you're doing a sort of smaller workbench and you just want it in the middle, then you can just put a piece along the back. I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody does with this shed. And I've actually set up um, a group on Facebook called Little Bits and Pieces by You. And it's a group where you can share your photos of the things that you've made from my 
uh, YouTube channel or from any of my three books. And I love to see what you're making. I'll put a link below to my Facebook page and then you can find the group from there. It's a closed group so you need to sort of request um, to become a member. And I check that regularly every day so I'll just approve you as soon as I see you. And I'm pressing this down as well, as well as sort of against the wall like that. Just get rid of that little bit of glue there. Okay, so that's the bench now complete. But because I want mine to look particularly sort of old and rough, what you can do is just take your um, craft knife and very, very carefully sort of make a few scores in the edge of the um, wood. That's just sort of people have been working on it, the saw may have slipped or their knife. And again, it's one of those things where you don't want to go too mad. You sort of think about the places where more wear and tear will occur. And it's not sort of overly noticeable, but it's just all these little tiny details that you put in that really do make a difference when somebody's looking in. It's all the little things that they notice. And what you can also do is take a piece of sandpaper, this is a 180, and just sort of sand off, maybe at the corners, And again, the legs where somebody may have been standing. And just sand away a little bit of the varnish. Okay, don't go mad, just a little bit at a time. And then sort of step back and have a look. And if you want to do a bit more, you can. and you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want to. You, know, you might want to do um, some sort of dents and knocks in the actual top of the workbench as well. So see what tools you've got in your toolbox. Maybe you could use a, a sort of flathead screwdriver to make a few dents in there. A few nicks and dents and knocks. And do have a look at that Facebook group as well. Like I say, I'd love to see what you're doing. I might want to copy some of your ideas as well. Okay, so that's it for today. And I really hope you've enjoyed that. And I'm going to be doing lots of shorter little tutorials, um, adding little bits at a time. We're going to put a... Um, a light switch in here and we'll do some sort of tube wiring as well maybe put some plug sockets and things like that in and then of course we'll be making lots of bits and pieces to go in here and I'll, I'll get them on as often as I can I'm working on book four at the moment so I don't do as many YouTube tutorials as I'd like to but I really want to get on as many as I can especially for this project and if you enjoy making um, doll's house furniture and miniatures, do have a look at my books. There's three of them so far. They're all available to purchase from Amazon. And I'll put a couple of links below. And for now, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.